house it and aloha this is kanaka cab you are on akaku you'll find me on kanaka cab youtube thank you i'm neil norris thank you everybody for listening and hopefully being a part of our project thank you very much the possibility of unnecessary stream flood erosion makes the stream beds very unstable threatens away taking away sections of our road and properties that your ends of your ancestors low eat the unstable river banks really need to be addressed for safety of huge unstable rocks ready to roll down and we just pray to god that one of our children playing in the stream or prawn hunting don't get crushed by an unstable rock. There's a lot of places in the stream where there can be a huge rock with a little tiny rock right underneath it, you know, family safety. I just have an added note here too about that, that uh, about 30 years ago, Uncle Moki and, and Uncle Sammy, kaha ha ha ha, put a big excavator in the stream and they did the same type of stream bed modification. It was part of the Hawaiian culture for everybody to take care of the kahawai and make sure that that thing is clear the main river bed has its place to go and um, we can uh, project it from um, any trouble areas uh, plus way more uh, what uncle sammy and uncle moki did was fantastic um, and at the time uh, john wittenberg stepped up stepped up to the plate and got a grant for the valley that um, that paid for everything so it wasn't such a burden on all of us at the time which was a wonderful thing both of the river crossings were paid after that project both of the suspension bridges were built originally and both of the allies for both sides of the village were totally restored so you know back in the day what we had to do is every time we had water would come, mess up everything for the intake. We had to get out there, fix up the intake, put black plastic down, next big water, gone. You know, and that just gets really old after a while. John stepped up to the plate, totally secured both of the OIs so everybody can have their irrigation down to their tarot patches. And you know, that's what it's all about. It's all about maintenance for easier access. To the water, whether it's pipe water, Hawaii water, or the Kahawai water source. Um, we have received permission from the county to go ahead with our project. The Hawthorne Cat Company is ready to cut loose with the machine as early as tomorrow, Wednesday. So that's the one main purpose of this meeting, um, to make sure we can depend on all you guys to um, you know whether you're in or whether you're out or you have any objections or whatever but we got to make sure that all the finances for that machine are in place otherwise it's not going to happen okay um, no matter how we get your fair share to cover those expenses I've, I've crunched some numbers to try to figure out you know um, what those numbers are but um, no matter how you get your money whether it's from your own personal assets or whether it's a donation from any Hawaiian groups or cookie or banana bread sales, whatever. It all works, it's all money, we're all good. Okay, so um, just like when the stream wiped out our suspension bridge up there and Oahu stepped up to the plate, got a $400 donation from a Hawaiian group. Dukalos Kahele came up with a donation from a Hawaiian group of $500, that was 900 bucks that didn't come out of me and Maddie's pocket to be able to fix that bridge which everybody uses that gets trapped up there on big water or they need access to come down as an emergency exit if they can't get across river crossings. Okay, so those outside sources are really big. If a lot of the families can't afford you know, what is proposed here, then hopefully we can go out and get outside resources from other people to be able to cover the cost. Um, also, the weather pattern is definitely changing from one of the wettest winters we had this winter of big water and so into a much drier uh, weather pattern. 
So everything kind of is in our favor right now. Everything's really looking good. It's on our side. And all of you know that living out here, that anything can happen. Whether, you know, out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, anything can happen. We get a storm blow through here. So, you know, it's kind of the luck of the drop as far as weather goes. But um, if this project was in when it was the middle of winter, it would be kind of tough. Um, when Jonathan came up with his little machine and we were working in the stream, all of a sudden the stream came up, man, that thing was lifting it up. We had to get the hell out of the river bit. You know, we want to be able to keep going, so weather is definitely on our side. Okay, those are our goals. I want to kind of go over with the previous attempts. Um, everyone knows the flood devastation that happened, and we made many attempts to try to get some help. Okay, we checked with the county. The county had nothing to do with it. State of Hawaii, they'd have nothing to do with it. FEMA was contacted also, and we couldn't get any federal help, basically because the President of the United States has to declare a, a disaster area to get the help. And Trump ain't gonna come out here, so that I was way up. Um, we, then we tried checking with outside sources to get a machine in here uh, for the trouble areas. Uh, everybody talked to people with big machines, but that's all really big bucks. Uh, then I started talking about, for anybody that doesn't know, this is Jonathan Kurtz, lives up at 10 Mile, been out here forever. Uh, he's done much work with us before. So um, he's always been very reasonable with his prices. And um, when we first started, Jonathan had a great deal for us. We tried the little machine, the little excavator in the machine, as well as also um, Malia and Jonah hired the excavator behind their house. And those little excavators would come with a solution that it's like you got a really big hole, you got to dig. It's like digging it with a spoon. You know, you can work all day days in one spot and nothing's going to get done. We needed a big machine to do all the, these trouble areas that we're going to talk about. Um, that was just not happening. So Jonathan left and we had to figure out some other kind of solution. And I just want to say mahalo to Malia and Jonah for um, stepping in and taking care of their Ina and you know, trying to work out you know, a solution to how we can figure out what to do. Well, I, I talked to Jonathan again, and he totally stepped up to the plate for the villagers of Kahakaloa. He knows the crew at the Hawthorne Cat Outfit place, and they laid out, or he laid out the problems and talked them into donating the 314 Cat Excavator. And through Jonathan knowing these people, and me sending request letters and we were emailing them photos of all the trouble areas in the stream. The Hawthorne folks wanted to procure our valley and donate. Okay, what you would rent for over $10,000 a month is what they're donating to us. The, the price for the machine, if they were going to charge somebody to rent that machine, would be over $10,000. Okay. Um, and that's it, no machine rental charge to us, uh, so it can be to our service. But then in return, we have response three or four responsibilities that we have to take care of on our end, which is the expenses. Number one, the hauling fee to get it out here. Number two, insurance to cover Hawthorne to make sure everything is all good. Three, the labor, and four, the fuel, okay. Now, to break all, um, we're gonna go over all these costs in a minute. Um, when we crunch the numbers, I'm gonna get to that. And um, I just wanna say mahalo to Kat, he's not here, and also to Leroy um, for offering to help run the machine to help cut down the labor costs. Uh, but due to liabilities with the Hawthorne Cat Company, they're only gonna give Jonathan permission to operate the machine. That's just because of liabilities. So that's what's up with that. Okay. Next is the solutions from Mackay to Mapa. Okay, there's basically five trouble spots that we need to really address. I'm going to go from Mackay to Mapa. Okay, first of all is the Muliwai. Okay, that needs to be cleared out with a lot of debris and rebuild the beach access that gets down there. Right now, nobody can get down there. If Chico wanted to go down there the other day, he's telling me, oh, I can't get down through the road. There's dead fish laying around down there. I mean, it's a mess down there. It's right in 
you know, it's summertime, everyone wants to hang out on the beach, go down there and do their thing. So, movie wise, okay, number two, the first river crossing and behind the Costin's house where the erosion is just eating it up really bad over there. Um, so that would incur um, dropping the river crossing because it's all filled in right now and build and um, restore the entrance where we go in because if you drive down the first part of the road where the hole just got fixed and everything, you'll notice the bank between the road and the river is about this high. I mean, it's higher than your doors. Okay, when the road was first built and put in there, when we first built the road in the very beginning, me, Uncle Sam, or um, Uncle um, Alfred, and Uncle Ned, that was the same level. So it didn't flood out like it does now. That was way higher. So we've got to fill that in, make the river go down into the crossing and up the other side and clear out the river bed so the water can get down and not flood that whole area out. Okay? And then um, and prep it for possible concrete crossing. Okay, number three is the major worst area, which is right across from the cat's tarot patches, the whole area where that pond is right now. Um, that's probably the worst area. Uh, basically, everybody can just kind of look at it and tell what's up. That, that debris has such a huge pile there. There's a giant island in the middle of the stream. The water wants to come over on the Lahaina side when it should be going on the Wailuku side. We pull all that stuff over, build a big retaining wall to hold it all in, get back. Right, right now, when you drive up that road, the pond is almost under the road. Okay? So next, the road's going to be gone, okay? A couple more big waters, it's history. There's no road for anybody to go up and down the valley to their homes, to check water lines, or to hold all of it. Either way, there's not going to be a road. And that's right on the verge right now. That is the worst spot. Um, and, um, you know, you want to prevent that erosion, push all that over, build the wall, and then the next spot would be number four which is up towards my place up by the second river crossing, which about a third of it is gone. Uh, those of you that have come up the valley can see what happened to that. It's pretty history on that one spot. It's very dangerous. And it has created a, what we call an eddy because the river coming down eroded everything in front of it and then it swirls around and takes out the bank. I lost about 30 feet of property from that last storm. Easily 30 feet. I mean, it's gone. That ulu tree is the only thing saving that little bank right there. The roots for that thing have been holding it in. So that area needs to be addressed, plus the instability of the rocks right below the first suspension bridge are uh, very unstable to where um, they've rolled down into the riverbed. Those need to be packed back up against the side to hold in the foundation for the first suspension bridge. Okay, then the fifth area is up toward Oliver's place. Um, Duke Lowe's got a real high spot right um, before the Hawaii that has filled in tons of rocks and that should be cleared out to get a river bank going again there so it doesn't encroach on Duplo's property and all that whole area up there. Plus, that area needs to be reinforced from the second uh, suspension, around the second suspension bridge, because that's getting to be ready to go to. Oliver's telling me how concerned he is and how concerned all the valley people are that use that second bridge too, because of safety purposes. And who knows, if that thing goes, then that whole uh, that whole foundation for the second suspension bridge is going to go too. That's got to get addressed too. That's very important. That's, um, you know, emergency the safety. The 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 yeah. the the okay. Well, if that's the case, then less time could be spent there. Okay. Um, it should all be addressed just to make sure everything is good with this project. Okay, the all, er all areas are concerned with the bank stabilization, restoration, and the excavator has been donated for one month. Okay, the project plans to be spending enough time, uh, five days 
uh, excuse me, five days to one week on each area uh, to make sure time-wise that all the trouble areas are taken care of. So we don't want anybody worried about, oh, well, they're going to spend all the time on one area and the other areas aren't going to get addressed. No. If we got to do it as efficiently as we can so we can move on to the next area so we can fit all that into one month. Um, one of the main concerns everybody has is what area is going to be done first. Let me tell you this. Yes. I want you all to know that uh, one of these machines, some of you guys know, but one of these machines can kill you. Now, this is the kind of machine that will compensate and, and redo the stream and, and whatever else you need to do. The points that he brought up. You, you should, you'll be able to see it in action, and you'll see how much material this thing can, can move around. It's, that's one thing I, I want to stress, is that all these points that he made up are for real, and these things can be rectified uh, within reason with a machine like this. Right, that example of I said, if you've got a big hole, try digging that hole out with a spoon, no, you need that shovel in there to get that hole dug. Okay, um, the, the best solutions um, recommended by talking to everybody, um, I like John John's idea about having, uh, we were gonna go from do three, four, and five first because that way guys come up the valley, the machine and the project won't be in everybody's way. Then do number two, the river crossing, and number one, the Muliwai. Do the river crossing, you prep that, get it ready, get everything done, and then when the machine's ready on its way out, that last week we spend, or five days, whatever, we spend down on the Muliwai to fix all that up, and then the machine's on its way out. Um, this isn't for individual uses for anybody's property or stuff like that. This is for the community, for the main Kauai that we take care of and maintain that and make sure that it's all good you know for future flooding um, the machine's going to be doing most of the work so don't feel obligated to jump in there and start helping the machine move rocks around because the machine you know needs its space and the help from people in the village that we're going to need is going to be physically to help clear to help clear any kind of trees that are in the way on the way up and those trouble areas would be from where Duplo and um, Kenny have those new taro patches across and down the stream where that giant vine has just taken over it's creating a huge dam that is pushing the river over to the wall behind the Costin's house that's got to get cleared out. The riverbed's got to get moved over a little bit and take out that little isthmus thing that's, that's been bugging, you know, everybody in that, in that general area. From that point up to where, right after the storm, our gang jumped in there and cut down trees. Ohaku had a big gang jump in there and cut down trees. From that area down to the area I just mentioned, uh, right across from Cats, uh, you know, the donk where the donkeys and stuff were, all the way down there, that part of the riverbed. If anybody wants to help do anything at all, that's probably the most important area that needs to be addressed for, uh, you know, chainsaws and whatever. Um, okay. Um, and I just want to say, we'll have a big mahalo for you for having that gang come up and come in there and help cut down the trees and stuff like that. And, um, you know, down from the pond area, uh, down um, the riverbed. Also, anybody that wants to lend a hand later on down the line, likely right after this project is power, um, we'll be working on the condition of the ruts of the road. That storm went down the whole road and just, you know, made ruts and everything and made it really, really bad. Um, just beating up the heck out of everybody's cars so, or any ATVs or whatever. Um, so likely right after this project, we'll be working on the condition of the rest of the road uh, since the flood tore it up. Hopefully we can get uh, Travis back here 
and we can continue. And he can help us continue spreading road material from the Hunter Checkpoint Station. It's got oil and stuff in it. I want everybody to know too that that material, we don't want to use it anywhere close to where it can get down in the riverbed. That material should only be used for where the stream is not supposed to go over the road, but just, you know, fix ruts and stuff for not in the riverbed. Okay? Any of the places like up past my place and the entrance to the stream bed, we use material from the area, river rocks and sand to fill that in and we can pack that down. We don't want any kind of environmental stuff, you know, messing up the valley or, you know, killing fish or anything like that. That's out. So I want you guys to all be aware of that. That's, you know, one of our big concerns too. Um, also, I want to just mention too that the county has given permission to any of the villagers that want to use any of that road material out there to fix their driveways and stuff. It was kind of under the hat. We were kind of thinking, oh yeah, you know, we got to keep this when the DLNR is not out there because somebody might say something. Well, Jonathan talked to him and stuff and it's all good. That That's all waste material out there and it's totally open for any of us villagers to work on your driveway or fill any pots or ruts or holes that are right there, you know, to, to help make your driveway nice. So anyway, that's a goal for anybody that needs to do that. Um, and um, yeah, mahalo to Pohaku and for Travis for coming out here. He didn't charge anything for filling the big hole at the entrance of the uh, our driveway down there. And a uh, little work on the lift the river crossing and for helping us with some of the worst spots because he has that dump truck and that thing was really a big help to get excavated or any kind of a loader out there on that pile and Travis was great he's got that dump truck and we can go and fix all the bad spots and that's going to really save us from uh, save me Maddie Rick and Dino guys for all the hard work that we got to do by back that we put shovels of material on that road by hand, you know, and um, everybody uses the road, but how many guys actually get out there with a shovel and help put something on there? You know, that's a big concern, and I think everybody in their mind should just be thinking about that to help out just as far as their own conscience goes, of what it entails to keep the maintenance going on where we live. Um, okay, also, I just want to say this from my heart that I really want you guys to please respect the road. Everybody here really pretty much does. There isn't too much trouble with guys not respecting the road. There are a few that'll go haul ass up and down the road, but just remember, just go slow on that road, okay? Because when you go fast, it tears up the road and it just makes more work for everybody to maintain the road. So everybody just leave five minutes early Kind of cruise, remember where you are, you know, think of yourself being in the valley and just respect your neighbors and, you know, just take it easy up there, man. Just remember where you are in the valley, okay? Um, okay. Um, that was our solutions to our problem. Now, next is what everybody's definitely wondering about are the numbers, okay? Um, what we're getting is a 314 cat excavator that's been donated by the Hawthorne Cat Company and that's a $10,000 donation right there at least because they could rent it out for that much money easily. Okay, then that leaves the villagers, the responsibilities to Hawthorne of those four things that I mentioned. The hauling fee, the insurance, the labor, and the fuel. Going over those, number one, the hauling fee. Okay, that's a really big machine. Um, at first, they were gonna donate a 336 cat, and Jonathan has a connection for the hauling fee out here from Herman, is that Colossa? Yeah, Herman Colossa. And the mach first original machine was too big to fit on his trailer, so we'd have to go with somebody like TJ Gomes that wants to charge $1,500 one way. Okay, that's 3,000 bucks just for hauling the feet. Okay, the Hawthorne place downgraded the machine to a 314, which is still a huge, big machine. And 
They, um, Jonathan hooked us up with a killer deal with Herman at 200 bucks one way. So in and out, it's only 400 bucks compared to three grand. That just saved our gang $2,600. Okay, thanks to Jonathan. Okay, the second thing that we're responsible for is the insurance to cover Hawthorne to make sure there's any kind of accident or anything like that. The insurance cost is $250 per week. If we have it for four weeks, that's a thousand bucks right there. Third thing is the labor. Jonathan is donating his first week of time to the valley. He's going to be working for free for everybody for that first week. Second, third, and fourth week at $25 an hour. Anybody that knows big equipment knows that that's unheard of. Normally it's $80 to $100 an hour for labor for anybody to sit on that machine all day long. Okay, so eight hour a day, 25 bucks an hour is $200 a day. Uh, since Jonathan's first week is on the house, then 20 days would be four grand. Okay, number four is the fuel. Jonathan was telling me approximately $100 a day to operate that machine. So if we had it every day in action, 30 days would be three grand. Okay, those are our total expenses right there. 400 for hauling fee, 1,000 for insurance, 400 for, or 4,000 for labor, and 3,000 for fuel. That comes out to $8,400, okay? And then if we go ahead and do the river crossing, that's gonna be another added expense. We figure anywhere, these are just estimates as far as cement goes because, you know, if Chico or Jonathan know anybody at the cement company that can give us a deal, this can bring down our cost big time right there for any kind of cost to redo the river crossing and cement. Okay, so with that, three to 4,000, we're gonna figure that in later on if people wanna start putting in money for that. I've already got about $1,000 towards that um, through uh, Charlie Carter's property. He's willing to donate more money besides what he did. So far, I've got all the villagers on a list right here with um, a kind of a minimum projection of what would make this happen for everybody's families on what the cost would be. Um, I'm willing to throw in more money. Maddie and I were both thinking, we both want to throw in 500 bucks, that's a thousand. Leroy stepped up to the plate to the max. He, he wants to put in a thousand bucks for his family and what's going on with that. With Charlie, he donated uh, John Robinson and Kenny's first, this or their next month's rent, 200 bucks each, which is 400, plus he's throwing in 500, so we got 900 there. Okay, we're close to three grand already, just from three families, okay? So that makes it pretty minimal for everybody else. I crunched the numbers today to try to figure out what those expenses would be. Now, I don't feel, and I don't think anybody in this room feels differently than that, but I really feel that um, we've got the people that check water or holo holo and use the road and they should throw in a little bit to help maintain the road so they don't have to drag water pipes up there and you know do all that um make it hard on themselves so i came up with um from what leroy's putting in what i'm putting in and what uh carter's putting in already almost three thousand dollars i have a list here of everybody in the valley okay everybody in the valley whether they're close to the stream, whether they check water or not. Some people will feel it in their hearts that this is a good project for the community, for everybody. And if they can, you know, put what they can, fine. I've got the numbers, I've got a little number next to everybody's name. Uh, the $100 donation is from the families that basically just use the road for their water lines and stuff. The other one, which is $400, is the families that, um, you know, all the families that go to houses and, you know, they have a big gang going in there and they actually live right there. So 
by crunching those numbers of a thousand dollars for people for maintenance of water lines and then people in the area that live there I added it all up with everybody in the valley and believe it or not it came out to eight thousand four hundred dollars I couldn't believe it I had to like <clears throat> add it up a whole bunch of times because I couldn't believe that with that suggestion it comes out to exactly what we need excluding the material for the river crossing as far as cement and stuff like that goes. If everybody throws in more money than what we're asking, then that money can go toward material costs for the river crossing. Okay? So those, those numbers are right here. Um, I've got thank you. And what I was going to do, like I said, I'm keeping a ledger with everybody's name. When the money actually comes in, it's going to be on the list. So every penny is accounted for, and everything goes to the hopper and people to pay the expense of the machine. Okay, um, basically, I think that's it. Everybody, uh, oh yeah, did I overlook, like, you're not on the list, I'm sorry I overlooked you, and if you could please just, you know, put your name down there and your contribution. So, um, I think that's basically mapping out that should, uh, you know, answer, does anybody have any questions or anything? It's basically really cut and dry. It was psyching me to get up in front.